Uh, what's going on here, guys? Figured I'd do a quick video update. Um, I got the transmitter powered on, running from my 12 volt. Well, it's a variable DC supply. I can crank it from 0 volts to 120 volts DC, and I'm powering the transmitter off of it. And right now we're using 12 volts, 170 milliamps, a little over 2 watts of power. And you know what? I'm going to keep it under 2 watts. So, right here. We're under 2 watts of power. 1.8 watts. But anyway, this is the interesting effect. I believe the transmitter is producing scalar wave energy or scalar radiation. Now, the CIA even has on their website declassified documents talking about scalar wave radiation and scalar energy it's pulsed DC energy that has no frequency so the way it's created is you have high frequency going through bucking coils which is two coils oppositely wound to each other to create a scalar energy transmission which this Tesla coil is doing similar to Tesla's uh, magnifying transmitter which is by filer this Tesla coil is made out of 24 AWG wire it's kind of thick oh no I'm sorry it's 26 AWG so this Tesla coil is made with 26 AWG wire and the primary and secondary this you can't see the secondary it's under this uh, transformer tape but you can see the little wire where it comes out and anyway L1 is one inch long 8 gauge L2 is 26 gauge uh, 4 inches long and this L3 coil is 16 AWG and it's wound in the opposite direction of the L2 which creates the bucking field none of these effects would occur without this oppositely wound coil like n none of these wireless effects occur without the bucking coil which is this this one and as you can see this is the ball which is just the dielectric antenna you can see in here there's nothing in there there's nothing under the transmitter now the effects that occur with the bucking coil is the extreme wireless power. These are just two RF diodes, one N four one four A RF diodes, and I can light an unlimited amount of these with my transmitter. The transmitter has an unlimited working capacity because I believe it's producing scalar energy. So we're consuming one point eight watts, hundred sixty two milliamps at 11.41 volts. Now I can take this, touch this to anything metal within 500 feet and it will light up. Like look at this. I'm just holding the ground end of the little receiver and I touch the other end here and it lights up. Even getting it close causes it to light up. And this is just a bolt that sits on a magnet so I can spin my wire. Everything's removable. Just a strong magnet. I got even more sensitive diodes too. Um, these are even more sensitive than the one N4148. The Bat 41s. So I can even touch this to my measuring tape, which is just steel. And look how weird this is. Like that shouldn't even be possible. I can do that with less than two watts of power. And I can turn it down to even less than one watt of power and it still it still does that. Like that should be impossible. And the other impossible thing that tells me it's producing scalar energy is this is just connected to the ground here. 
this light is just connected to the ground of my DC supply, which is powering the transmitter. This light is connected to the more sensitive diodes I said I had, the BAT-41. And I put this in a can, and it's still lit. Like, you can't impede the signal. It's still lit. In a metal can. When I touch it, it obviously gets brighter. And there's no degradation on my my power at all. There's no no change or no difference. Well, it's fluctuating a little bit. I'm gonna see if I can get this tuned less than one watt. Okay, so I'm at less than half of a watt of power. Less than half a watt. 5.86 volts, 0 0.069 milliamps, less than half a watt. How am I able to light this LED? It's lighting in a metal can. How is that possible? There has to be scalar energy occurring here, and I can everything can be picked up and removed. I touch this, it lights. I can disconnect this, you can see what's just an LED connected to the two BAT-41 diodes, the more sensitive version of the 1N4148, and I connect the ground back up to the bottom here, I put it back in my can, and it's lit. That, that proves it's scalar radiation. So I got that going. Less than half a watt. Now here's the part that will blow your mind. Look how bright this light is lit. Now this is the same thing as the other that I just showed you. This is only lit from my metal desk and the grounded metal wall outlet here all it's connected to this is a dead outlet except for the ground connection and if I even just touch this the light will light and don't mind this this is just my phone charger get that out of the way but anyway as you see like how the fuck is that possible And this is lit just for me touching it. It gets dim. Now if I touch this to a plane of metal, like my desk, watch how bright it gets. Like you can see how bright that got. And that's just connected to my desk. And if you touch it, it'll get brighter too. I'm trying to film this. So if I touch my desk, the light gets brighter and that's just for me touching the desk like can you see it fluctuating the light and doing that produces no form of power drain whatsoever on the transmitter so how am I able to transmit power this efficiently less than half of a watt and I'm able to light an LED light to almost full intensity at about six feet away between two metal ground points and I have it lit inside a coffee can and I can also take this other one touch it to here and that lights almost full intensity and there is no degradation on any of the loads over there no change on power draw either Like, how do you explain these effects? There's no degradation. And it all comes from that bucking coil that's wound in the opposite direction, the L3. So, there's obviously a new form of energy here being transmitted, and it's probably non-electromagnetic in nature. Like, these efficiencies should be impossible. This is just a block of uh, aluminum from my friend's uh, drip, um, hydraulic press that lights on that too. 
How am I able to do all that with half a watt? Half a watt. I'll shut it off. It takes a couple seconds to shut off because the circuitry is so efficient. So it shuts off. The light is dead. That light is dead. Nothing lights anymore. It's dead. And I'll toggle the power on and off. On. Off. On. That's interesting. Me touching the power supply dims that light. So I'm going to have to toggle it on and off without touching it. There we go. Off. I did switch it off. On. Off. I can't switch it on and off fast because like it takes a few seconds for the supply to shut off. Now I'm going to see how low we can get this to blow your mind. Alright, so that's, I can't even register, register that. That's one-tenth of a watt. That's less than one-tenth of a watt lit inside the can. This thing dimly lights too right here. Less than one-tenth of a watt and we still got wireless power. Like, that should be impossible. Less than one-tenth of a watt. That's good. It might even be a world record, and I didn't even fully optimize everything yet. And this is lit, too. Between the earth ground of my outlet and the metal desk. And notice when I touch it again, the light will get brighter. And I'm using one tenth of a watt to do this. Let's see if we can go even lower. Now this circuit almost has zero voltage switching. So we'll do 1.6 volts to keep it safe. And look at that, we have the light lit still with wireless power we're, we're using so little power it doesn't even register on the meter on the power supply <laughs> like that should be impossible I don't know if you guys know, don't know what's going on but this is like the most efficient form of wireless power transfer ever discovered it's most likely scalar in nature And yeah, feel free to like and subscribe to the channel. Um, this is a real electrical research channel dedicated to figuring out long-lost forgotten technologies. We're partnered with other labs around the world. And um, feel free to donate to us in our GoFundMe. And if you want to buy one of these as a kit, we sell a small version and a large version. 150 bucks plus shipping for the small version. 350 for the larger version plus shipping. And I'm going to be soon constructing two more versions, which are going to be much bigger. And those will probably be 500 and 750 for the price. And look, like, look at this. It's still lighting. That, should, that shouldn't even be possible. We can transmit wireless power with like virtually no loss. Amazing. And I'm not even using a tuned receiver coil, it's just these special LED lights. And again, I shut this off. And it's so efficient, we have to wait a few seconds for it to shut off. I hit the switch, it just isn't off yet. Now it's finally off. That light is out. That's in the little Faraday cage. So I'll turn this back on. And our light comes back on. But yeah, I'm going to try and keep this video under 15 minutes. Uh, you can contact MTech Industries 2022 
at gmail.com if you want to order real Tesla technology transmitter kits.